This is BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now, from Studio B, here's Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. Hey, BYU Sports Nation is live. Your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is Thursday, September 16th. Another matching shirt day in Studio B. We don't talk B. about it, and and randomly, <laughs> the same shirt. Twice in the same I, month. Outside of like after me- like years of not having it happen. Yes, outside of media day, when it's like, all right, let's sync up with the same shirt with the crew and whatever. Um, <laughs> I don't like it. It's a special day. <laughs> this is one of my favorite shirts. I, it looks amazing on you. You look great. Wherever and however you're connected, it is wonderful to have you with us. I am Spencer Linton. Yes. Wearing the same shirt as the man who is sitting to my left and a guy who's always there to help his teammate up when they've fallen down. I'm there for you, man. Yeah. Um, okay, Isaiah Capusi tweeted the following in reference to Blaine Fowler talking about Jaron Hall being a 4-4 speed guy. Isaiah Capusi tweeted, shoot, I ran a 4-4 to help my quarterback up after that play, a specific play where Jaron Hall runs out of bounds near the goal line. Watch right? the flash and royal blue come from the Isaiah right side Capucci. of your screen. Oh, okay. There yeah. you go, oh, Isaiah. Hey, hey. Now, he said 4-4 there. No way. That was like 5-2. Do love Isaiah, though. Stoked for the guys in their great win, uh, their big win. The journey continues, though. Big things ahead. Love Isaiah (laughs) Kafusi. Waiting for his NFL call. He believes it's going to come at some point. Yes. I made sure that Isaiah had David Nixon's contact info because Isaiah, to me, could be a David Nixon type where he can have an opportunity for a couple years in the NFL as a talented guy. We actually saw... Isaiah at undisclosed location. Well, if you follow me on Instagram, you know. Saturday, deep into the night. Technically, uh, it was Sunday. It was Sunday. We were partying on the Sabbath. That's how we roll. <laughs> Listen, Jeremy, it was a team effort to line up today's loaded Thursday show lineup. A ranked matchup looms for BYU football, and the Cougars are trying to accomplish something they haven't pulled off go. in 70 70- years. Years. More power fives. Let's go. ESPN's Rod Gilmore will join us where he believes BYU has a clear advantage over Arizona State. It's rivalry game day for BYU women's volleyball. Top 15 showdown with Utah. Jerem Jordan's going to call that match. Coach Heather Olmstead will join us live to preview the massive matchup. Plus a new definition, Jerem, for talent gaps. Mm. Bring on today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. BYU football ranked 23rd. Huh. Sounds nice. Uh huh. Two days out from a top 25 matchup with number 19, Arizona State. 23 19, Saturday night. OC Aaron Roderick says the team's trying to keep the outside noise to a minimum. Big challenge just to stay focused. You know, you got a lot of people telling us how good we are right now, and you gotta, gotta manage that and be ready to play again. We should help them by doing the reverse. BYU's awful. They're the worst. No one thinks they can do anything. I don't know if they can uh, (laughs) avoid the emotional letdown after the huge celebration. Yeah, man, I have Arizona State by 30 in this one. Whatever it takes, let's go. Cougar pregame live begins on BYU Radio at 8 Eastern with BYU TV's countdown and the kickoff live at 9 Eastern. Aaron Roderick was playing that card early in the season. Hey, we, we need to keep that chip on our shoulder that we had last year, which totally, BYU has ridden that to a, a very nice 2-0 start. I have been scoreboard watching, or at least projecting, based on where the other top 25 teams may slip up yeah. and allow BYU to jump up well, if they beat Arizona State. We're keep, two games in, and I'm already all in yeah, on that. Uh, yeah, for sure, you should. Um, and and BYU's 2-0. Just get to 3-0, and and you'll keep going. Just keep winning. Just keep winning. Dax Milne, no longer underappreciated. He's in the NFL. And his Washington football team faced the New York football giants tonight. Both teams 0-1-1, looking for the first win of the season. Kickoff tonight, 8.20 p.m. Eastern. Good luck to Dax. Number 15 women's volleyball host rival Utah, who's ranked number 10, big time. Although the day they got ranked 10, they lost. Boy, Doesn't matter. Don't, don't, just they're number 10. Both have lost one match in three weeks of the season. Both, uh, you know, against pretty good teams. Both have players who transfer to the other school. And Kenzie Kerber and uh, Madeline Robinson watching at 9 Eastern on BYU TV and the app. 18th ranked BYU women's soccer will host Idaho State tonight. Don't sleep on Idaho State. I will. From historic Southfield to Cougars, four wins, two losses, and a tie on the season. You can watch that match tonight live at 9 Eastern on the BYU TV app. So just... 
have the BYU women's volleyball match on your linear television, yeah. and then you can stream the soccer match on your phone or your Everyone's iPad. Everyone's already on their phone. Yeah, anyway. let's go. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. Shaping up for a special season. What? Tim McTire, star for BYU football, part of that 96 special season. Part of that fan fest in Vegas. Yes, he was. Tweeted out the following yesterday, Jerem, and I quote, Why I think this year's BYU team has shades of 96. There appears to be a goal. They have a coach they love, the we-can't-lose element, which makes every game a championship, rivalry, or a big game, the feeling of something to prove, and big bull aspirations. Win and we in. Hashtag BYU end quote of the tweet. Jerem. Is it too early to get that special season feel like Tim McTire? Beating Utah in and of itself after that streak makes the season and that win, more specifically, special. But, yes, it is too early. It's too early. Uh, there have been 2-0 starts uh, for BYU. 2-0 is not crazy. But 2-0 versus Power 5 is pretty special. In uh -huh. fact, a little juicy stat of the day right now. Mm. It's the BYU Sports Nation stat of the day. Yeah, the last time BYU started 2-0 versus two Power 5 teams was 1984. Oh, snap. What? What? BYU is going to the ship. No, that's not how BYU beat um, Pittsburgh and Baylor yeah. in 1984. Yeah. Back to so, the... So, uh, back then, there weren't the power distinctions and the whatever. But uh, kind of interesting. It's it's too early. If BYU goes three and zero and wins Saturday, okay, now we're talking. I think we can start the conversation yep. because yep. You, we expect then BYU to beat South Florida and yes. Utah State, and at five and zero, the possibilities get interesting. Now, looking at the whole season, playing seven Power Fives, that's going to be tougher. I still have BYU for multiple losses. Seven Power Fives, I, yeah. but you've already beaten three. That'd if be you get good. past Arizona State, that, that means you're going hopefully five and two at least in those seven, right? Listen, USC, I know they got crushed by a freshman quarterback return missionary, Tanner McKee, and Stanford got a new coach. Saturday. They got a new coach. That's still going to be a tough game. Sure. I know you guys talked about that yesterday. Um, Washington State, that feels winnable after Utah State went up there and did it, right? Virginia is playing much better than I anticipated. Uh, their quarterback, let's, Brendan, Brandon Armstrong. Throwing the ball all over the place. He's chucking it around. All, yeah, Robert and I has got him going. Granted, they have 21st-ranked. North Carolina this week to open up ACC play, and Virginia is an eight-point dog. Now, if Virginia beats North Carolina, they might be for real. Right. Right. Uh, I, I think that's going to be a weird emotional game anyway with Bronco and all those guys across the sidelines. So, listen, I've still got BYU for multiple losses this year. I think that could – I, I think nine wins feels pretty doable. Like, if BYU were able to get ten on this, oh, man. Ten would be incredible, and then then we'd really feel like, oh my gosh, BYU's ready for the Big Twelve, playing seven Power Fives. Some are tougher than others, right? Obviously, the Big Twelve slate's going to be tougher than what BYU's facing this year, I think. But it's a little early for these special season feel. It's early, isn't it? Funny though, how if one win against Arizona State happens, then as you said. Maybe it's okay to start feeling like it yeah. will be a special I, season. And I don't think it's funny. It's very one, serious. One more game. Because if BYU beats Arizona State, as we have mentioned earlier this week, then the Cougars will start back-to-back -back seasons 3-0 mm -hmm. for the first time in 70 years. I can't believe that never happened in the Lavelle Edwards era. Yeah. Not once. You, well, you end up playing tough teams early, right? And, and BYU is going to potentially beat three power fives in a row to make it happen for the first and, time in 70 years? Two ranked teams. That's the thing. Like, two ranked teams. Th this would be crazy. And if Arizona State is the new UCLA to you, which... Which they well, kind of are to me right now. Yes, let's see. Well, UCLA is doing their thing, UCLA right? might actually be good. <laughs> they might actually be good. We'll see. It's Again, it's early. It's so early. Like, what BYU has done has been awesome. But it's early. We won't know if it's really special until November. We won't really know that, right? Hard because not what to if you feel that way, though, right, early. Right. No, this is what we do. We felt this way in 2015. Hail Mary, Hail Mary, close loss to UCLA, go to Michigan, get smacked, and then it was like, oh, okay. 
Then it was like, oh, I guess we got lucky, actually. It but was, don't you feel like this I don't team feel like BYU's lucky. is in a much better position than 2015 was? Yes. Based on the two Hail Marys, like, yeah. BYU won I, I, their first game, won them. I'm not specifically talking about the 2015 sure. personnel. Just the feeling, the feeling after yeah. okay. 2-0. Okay. That's what I'm referring to. Sure. Beat Arizona State, you go 3-0, and and then the schedule lightens up a little bit. Then BYU's going to roll USF. In the vengeance for 2019 the game Jaren in Hall Tampa. Yep. Okay, yep. yep. Jaron Hall I hope still Baylor remembers Romney that. Comes in at the end in a blowout. Yes. <laughs> Both quarterbacks are going to play because it's going to yeah. be a blowout. You're 4 0. Handle your business in Logan, Utah, Utah State. State. If BYU's 5 0 with three Power Five wins going into Boise State, well, they legitimately, Boise State coming here. They legitimately might be a top 10 team. Think about Maybe. that. Yeah. You're 5 0 with three Power Five wins and two ranked wins. If not, in BYU's fairly. on the cusp of yeah. the top ten. So yeah, when Saturday, it starts to feel like a special season. But they, yes. it all begins on Saturday. Yes, big game Saturday. Beats, win on Saturday, beat Keep Arizona winning. State, and then it gets really, really fun. Keep winning. We know the men's uh, topic too. We know the men's basketball uh, schedule now, thanks to Nick Robinson. Do you feel like there are enough quality games to be tourney bound on this? I think so because the majority of BYU's big games are on the road or on neutral basketball courts. And that matters Luckily, for basketball net rankings, right? If they weren't, it'd be weird. San Diego State is at home. At worst, that game's probably tier two. But then BYU's going to have a tier one game against Oregon. They're going to have a tier one game. Quad one. Quad one game against Utah because that's on the road. Uh, Creighton's going to be probably a top 50 team. That's a neutral site. Oh, Creighton's yes. quad one for sure. So, right there. Yeah. I mean, I, already there you have three quad ones in the non-conference schedule. I, I agree. Uh, there, there's enough. And then... Add got two to three Gonzag games and a St. Mary's? Mary's road game. And there's seven quad ones potentially. San Francisco on the road could yeah. potentially be a quad one game. Like right. We're talking about right. at least, I think, eight to nine quad one opportunities. Yes. Last year, BYU played eight. and uh, They're on yeah. par to do the same thing this season. And, and BYU went uh, three and five. That's all it takes. All you have to do is kind of win... 30-ish percent. You have to win one out of every three, basically. So, quad two, I've got up to 10. Ooh. Utah State, St. Mary's at home, San Diego State, Missouri State. Again, 76 to 135 on the road, true mm-hmm. road. Yep. Weber State, Vander, Vandy, um, you know, Pacific, USF, LMU, um, Pepperdine. So, yeah, hopefully the league's good enough to produce four quad twos, and uh, you go from there. Yeah. Eight quad ones is enough. Yes. You win three. Yes. We a couple years ago we were like, hopefully BYU gets like five. Eight would be awesome. And they might have more depending on what happens in the West Coast Conference tournament. Yes. And we haven't taken into account, well, I guess we did uh with Vandy there possibly, right? Um Diamond Head and who you're playing when. Sure. Not, if right? it's top one hundred, Vandy would be a quad two game. Yeah. And hopefully there will be variation. We're just looking at last year's numbers, right? Those don't necessarily mean that these teams will be that way. The the fun thing, if we think BYU is good enough to be what we think BYU is good enough to be, which is in at single least digit at seed, l- at least an at large tourney team, top forty four, okay. then BYU is a quad one in almost every case for the opponent. Does that make sense? And that matters. So, so BYU is a team that want people want to schedule. I don't know why people don't want to go on the road and play at BYU. That's a quad one. Top 75. Mark Pope was saying, we're doing three for one. Trading. We'll, we'll play at your place three times and if you'll go come to the neutral. Marriott Center once. Or one neutral, right? Yeah, wow. crazy. I So, yeah, totally. Totally. This is a really good schedule. And that's what's fun about hoops is you're rewarded for the schedule. But now with BYU football in the Big 12, and I've yet to really address this, Trust me, we have two years. I'll address plenty. Yeah, there'll be time. This, my scheduling philosophy is just there will be time. blown up. Um, then we talk non-conference scheduling philosophy of the ABC kind of Utah deal, which I agree with. So, yeah, and, and basketball, it's rewarded. And this is totally good enough. I'm very excited about the Oregon and Creighton games. Those are both neutral. Um, Oregon technically neutral. De facto the, road games, but yeah, neutral. It's two, it's two hours away. Um, but, yeah, it could literally be down the street if it's not in that other – Home gym, it's not. It's not like playing Utah in uh, Vivint is neutral, but literally like uh, three miles up the hill is a road game. Right, but yeah. if, if BYU were to host Oregon in Salt Lake City at Vivint, it's, it would sure feel like a de facto right. BYU home we're t- game. We're talking with quads. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
Not, Isn't it funny not, how that works? Not the feeling in the gym. The technicality. What's the feeling in the gym rating? Uh, BYU basketball, we think, shaping up for a potentially special season. Joe Lenardi of ESPN has the Cougars as the last bye in his projected tournament, a 12 seed. That ain't no special season. <laughs> 12 ain't no special season. Well, ask UCLA. Special. They were an 11 seed, and they went to the Final Four. Just get in yes. the tournament. Well, winning is special. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Being a six seed is awesome. You have to win the game. Though. Five ranked teams on campus right now, including BYU football at number 23. There's a special feel in the air, Jerem. Oh, it's always special at Brigham. Our question of the day. Is it too early to get that special season feel about this year's BYU football team? Let's hear from you in Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. At Sports Bros on Twitter. Arizona was a cupcake. Yikes, it didn't really uh, turn out to be a cupcake. It got a little weird at the end. But eh, game one. Utah is always a weird game. Yep. The Arizona State game is what will tell us if this could be a special season. Mm. I'm withholding my emotions until then. If BYU gets Utah and Arizona State, two of the top three teams we thought were the toughest games. <sighs> Pretty good. They'll be three and zero in the Pac-12 South, and on their yes. way to a de facto Pac-12 we, South championship. We will if BYU wins all its Pac-12 games. We will hang a banner. Yes, as and, we should. And we will say this is for you, Wilner, on it. Brian Buss on Twitter says, "Way, way, way too early. Yeah, just two games into the season, with five Power Five games to play. Arizona State this Saturday, Virginia with Bronco, Baylor, Baylor USC, sneaky. Yep. all make me pause. Yeah, the road game at Baylor yeah, after Boise yep. State." First real I know road you put challenge. That one at the toughest left, yeah. FPI agrees with me. Toughest game for BYU left on the schedule according to uh, win, potential win percentage. Mm. USC is like right there in that area too. Plus, he adds Boise State. Dr. Bob, Robert, and I mm -hmm. says it takes six games to figure a team out. You bring that up often. Let's through wait until Boise State. Let's wait until at least the Baylor game. Yeah, well, through Boise State would be six. So there you go. Okay, coming up, what Bill Belichick said about Zach Wilson and ESPN's Rod Gilmore. Once again, on the call for BYU. All he does is call BYU games. Hey, awesome. He's going to preview the matchup with Arizona State. Where do the Cougars have an advantage? This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by the Tim Daly Auto Group, serving Utah since 1968. Dexter & Dexter is a full-service law firm offering a wide range of legal services. Since 1995, we have helped more than 20,000 Utahns both to navigate life's challenges and to make the most of life's opportunities. From auto accidents to criminal defense and from bankruptcy to family law, we are passionate about shouldering your burdens. To learn more about scheduling a no-obligation consultation, visit DexterLaw.com. This is where we dominate. Our playground, place of business. This is our promised land, where we seek to find ourselves. And we're here to make sure the spaces our best prove themselves on appear how they should. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. This is BYU football with Kalani Satake and Greg Rubel. When I was younger, I was a better dancer. Don't show any more dancing on here. Okay, good. <laughs> I think we've developed some really good habits the last couple weeks and, and looking to step it up again. A lot of great things can happen when they care. Not bad. That's good stuff. Hey. Yay. Yeah, thank you for ending on that one. That was a good <laughs> one. <laughs> BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Countdown to kickoff on BYU TV gets you ready for BYU hosting Arizona State on Saturday. Dave Blaine, David Spence gets you ready for 
the game, 9 Eastern time as the 23rd ranked BYU Cougars take on 19th ranked Arizona State. Anything and everything you need to know about the matchup, stars on both sides, going to be a great show. We are live in Studio B with our own great show oh, right now. Only one hour this week. Only one hour. Two, two. He Hema, we just throw Hema, the producer, into the mix. I don't know what two to, hours. Don't know what to do? Arizona, only two, an hour. Only an hour. Show? That's easy. We are live with our daily hour show in Studio B. This is your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play. -play. I am Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan. Joining us now over Zoom, a man who seemingly only calls BYU games lately. Rod Gilmore of ESPN is with us. Rod. Uh, we got a nice warm spot in Studio B for you to come hang out with us. We're working on the permanent residency in Provo. I, I am this close, this close to taking up residency there, man. It's. <laughs> I, I really think we should just come on the air on Saturday night just in BYU swag. <laughs> you know? I, <laughs> That would be if, hilarious. If, if, if I had it, I'd wear some swag on the air and just go with it, you know? <laughs> All those ASU fans are like, what's going on? Um, tell, tell us about Listen, your... Listen, they probably already feel that way anyhow. They've seen us for a couple of weeks calling BYU games. <laughs> They're like, yeah, the BYU homers. We thought we were the BYU homers. Wait a minute. Okay, so you've seen BYU the first two weeks, you and Dave Fleming. What are your thoughts on the Cougars as they go from kind of post-Zach Wilson era to 2-0 and in rank 23rd right now? Well, I, you know, I, I'm a little bit surprised at how easily they have uh, transitioned uh, to Jaron Hall. And uh, quite honestly, I'm surprised at the changes defensively. Um, Tuiaki has, you know, sort of changed his stripes a little bit this year. He's been way more aggressive on first and second down, which hasn't been his DNA. You know, the the, the book on, on BYU defensively has always been, yeah, you know, they're not crazy about man coverage. They're not crazy about blitzing. They like a lot of drop eight. Um, well, he's sort of, uh, you know, recognized what a lot of, you know, good coaches do. Which is you've got to switch it up some. And so uh, they were not known for going after the quarterback on first and second down. And he's mixed that up. And I think it's really uh, surprised uh, the first two opponents. And, you know, they played well on the back end. And then, look, um, Jaron Hall has become a star. You know, I, I don't think there's any other way to, to put it. He has, you know, elevated himself into uh, the discussion about NFL prospects, uh, where he fits on the quarterback chart. And here's the other thing. He has gone from being an unknown entity to being on the top 25 list of uh, college players for name, image, and likeness. He is now number 11. Wow. So in two weeks, he has made a name for himself. People are noticing him, and he's a really good football player. Rod Gilmore of ESPN is with us on BYU Sports Nation. Speaking of Jaron Hall and all of his teammates, it's so easy to get lost in the big win hangover after you snap the nine-game losing streak to your arch nemesis. You beat Utah for the first time in 12 years. A lot of people are almost anticipating just that natural letdown and the hangover to continue. Maybe BYU doesn't show up. How do the Cougars avoid what so many teams fall into in terms of that trap? Well, I, I don't know how you can have a letdown facing Arizona State. <laughs> you know? uh, they, they get your attention. I, I think if there's any kind of a concern about a letdown, it might be the following week when you get South Florida, but with Arizona State coming in, with Jalen Daniels, the quarterback, with Herm Edwards, the team that a lot of the experts in the offseason have said, this is your winner in the Pac-12 South uh, with the shot, you know, at, um, at winning the Pac-12 conference. Um, I, I, I don't see a letdown. If BYU doesn't play well, it won't be because, you know, they didn't take Arizona State seriously. Um, this is an opportunity for BYU to, to really make some noise. I, I don't know if you've noticed the, the chatter this week, but I can guarantee you this game is getting a lot of attention. It's getting a lot of attention on ESPN. It's going to get a lot of attention on game day. Uh, it's an opportunity for BYU to shoot up the, um, uh, the rankings. Uh, if they have a win, any kind of way, a win over Arizona State, uh, they won't be ranked uh, low 20s anymore. They'll, they'll shoot up because that will be as impressive a start as almost anyone in the country. Rod, if BYU beats Arizona, BYU State, beats Arizona State and they open up the season with three wins against Pac-12 South teams, 
Can we label them as the Pac-12 South favorite at that juncture? <laughs> Makes you wonder why they didn't get an invite to the Pac-12, right? <laughs> yes. Well, if I'm not mistaken, they still have USC on the on the schedule. Indeed, final uh, regular and, season game. Yeah, and uh, Washington State. So you know, win those two, and you can stake a claim to being the <laughs> champ of the Pac-12 South, okay. and petition the conference to let you play. I, I guess Oregon <laughs> in the Pac-12 championship game. <laughs> that would be fun. But we're getting we're getting we're getting ahead of ourselves. Yes, this, yes, we are. Yes, this 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 Arizona State team is as good as advertised. Now, they haven't played well the first two weeks. You know, they were not pushed by the competition. You know, they didn't put UNLV away until they got late third, early fourth quarter. Um, but they've got, what, 20 starters back. Uh, they are very difficult on the back end. Uh, they've got experienced players. Uh, they've got pass rushers up front. They've got great speed on defense. Uh, they've got three running backs uh, right off the bat right now. You know, two of them are considered serious prospects for the NFL. Uh, Rashad White might be one of the, you know, three or four uh, first backs taken in the draft. So they're pretty loaded. And and there is a, a fair comparison between quarterback Jaden Daniels and Jaron Hall. I mean, they both can beat you with making the right spontaneous play when to run. Uh, they have similar accuracy. Um, it, it's it's really a good matchup of quarterbacks. The one thing Arizona State I think is struggling with is to find you know receivers. They've got great talented young receivers, but you know that one guy or those two guys that you can count on you know consistently. I don't think that's happened yet. So I think they're a little concerned about their passing attack. Um, but those guys are really talented, and you know they, they could grow up on Saturday night. 267 rushing per game through the first two against SUU and UNLV, throwing for 187 a game. So Arizona State likes to establish the run. Obviously, Jaden Daniels, dynamic runner, leading rusher last year, two years ago, this year. If you're BYU, do you do you have to spy him? Do you load up on the run on first and second down and hope to make them throw on third? What's what's the strategy in your mind? Well, the first question is, do you have a guy who can spy him? <laughs> right. That, 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 that's the problem. You know, you can put a guy and say, hey, spy him, but Jaden Daniels may be a better athlete and, and may not, uh, you know, care who your spy is. Um, that, that's, that's a problem. I think the, the, the goal, if I were thinking defensively how to defend him, is you want to keep him in the pocket. Uh, you want to make him throw from the pocket, not on the run. I, listen, he's great from the pocket, but he's, he's really dynamic on the move. So you want to keep him in the pocket. You don't want him on the edge making plays. And you have to be concerned about the quarterback run run game because they they use him in the run game uh, an awful lot. Mm -hmm. But I think I think that the approach is you want to uh, you know sort of hurt them on first down, uh, run blitzes, get them into second and ten, uh, second and nine, um, and make it a little bit more difficult for them. But if they if they can run the ball on first down and get you get into second and six, second and five, you know you're at their mercy. So you really have to win first down against them. Uh, that, I think, would be the, pro the approach. Um, there's going to be a great matchup up front uh, with their offensive line, particularly their center, Donovan West, uh, and Mahe, and see what, uh, what goes on up there. I think that's going to be a real key. So, you know, it's a difficult plan, man. This, this is going to be a, a real, real tough big-time game. Rod Gilmore of ESPN is going to call the Arizona State <clears throat> at BYU game. Excuse me, Rod. It's an emotional thing. It is, it's been an emotional <laughs> season. BYU's in the Big 12. They're 2-0. and They're ranked. They've got Arizona State coming to town for a ranked match. It doesn't happen often in Provo. Rod, with all that in mind, Arizona State is a four-point favorite. But where do the Cougars have an advantage? So I'm asking for the Cougar fans, like, why should they feel okay about pulling another upset against a ranked team? Where do they have the advantage? Well, I think the advantage is that, you know, the last two games, we've seen BYU very, very consistently good on defense. Very consistent. You know, they, they took apart a, a really sound uh, Utah rushing attack. And so I feel pretty good about BYU's ability to handle Arizona State's running game. Uh, and if they can do that, 
and force the young receivers uh, to step up and find a way to beat them. Um, I, I think that's the advantage. Right now, we know after two weeks of watching this defense play, I'd be stunned if the BYU defense did not play well. You know, I expect them to play well after what we've seen. I think that's that's their DNA right now. So I think you know what you're going to get from them on that side of the ball. And the other thing is, you know that Jaron Hall is going to take care of the football. You know, he, he's, he doesn't make silly mistakes. Uh, he knows when to take a chance. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I, I think those two factors should make you feel pretty good going into the game. Um, but that doesn't mean that, you know, uh, this, this, is a, this is an easy one because this is a loaded, loaded Arizona State team. It's as fast as any team BYU will see uh, this season without question. We're looking forward to it. Uh, we wish you safe travels to Provo, Rod, to take uh, or to get ready to call the game between Arizona State and BYU. And just so you know, if you need help with the real estate agent in Provo, we know a few people. So just keep us <laughs> the, updated. You know, I should I should already be there. I should not have left Provo after last week. I should have just <laughs> you know stayed there for the week. <laughs> hey, we're looking forward to having you back at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. Thanks, my friend. Looking. All right. Thanks. Take care, guys. You got it, Rod Gilmore of ESPN. Going to call the game. All he does is talk BYU football these days. In a row, Maybe we should really get him some BYU swag or some BYU Sports Station swag. Hey, we got Roxy Bernstein something. Yes, we did. Behind the EU's both teams, the St. Mary's game, right? That was fun. Yeah. A little BYU Sports Nation. So when Rod does those Zoom interviews, he can throw yeah. up his uh, BYU swag yeah, like let's Roxy Let's give Rod a shirt, man. Okay. Okay, coming up, Heather Olmstead joins us to preview tonight's big match versus Utah. Oh, boy. I can't believe we're going to ask this question, but we have to address it. With Kalani Satake. Take a job outside of BYU, like maybe a big program in Southern California. This is BYU Sports Nation. There's only one big program in Southern California, Spencer. UCLA? <laughs> Trio Orem Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life when you live at Trio. Less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at TrioOrem.com. When my grandfather started this company in 1947, he couldn't have envisioned what we would ultimately become. We realized that our value to our customers is that we will be there day after day, year after year, doing whatever we need to to find solutions to the challenges that they face. We are committed to be honestly better in all that we do, in every opportunity that we have to serve our customers. Familiar with the BYU TV app? Yes. I beg your pardon? Sure, it's got great original TV shows. But it also gives you access to family films for free. Wow. Awesome! So gather around, grab some popcorn, and let us do the rest. It'll be fun. Watch some of your favorite films anytime, anywhere. <laughs> with the free BYU TV app. I like it. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Visible Supply Chain Management. Number 18, women's soccer fresh off a 7-4 win versus Missouri. Host Idaho State tonight, Southfield, 9 Eastern. Watch it live on the BYU TV. They score a bunch of goals. He is Jeremiah Spencer. This is BYU Sports Nation. You can always interact with the show, get great content throughout the day, following our social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and, yes, TikTok. Let's whip it! The Cougar Whip Around presented by Visible Supply Chain Management, tackling America's most challenging shipping problems. Bruce Feldman and others have brought up Kalani Sataki as a candidate for the vacant USC head coaching position. Any chance he leaves for this or another Power 5 coaching job? I don't think so. I'm saying 0.001% chance at this Never point. in the future. Because, well, 
I mean, or just right now. He said I he mean, wanted no. to be the next Lavelle Edwards. He wanted to be the, the Polynesian, Polynesian Lavelle. Yeah. If that is the case, then Kalani Satake is not going anywhere. I know things change. A lot of money talks very loudly in our day and age. Yes, it's different. But I still believe that Kalani, in his heart of hearts, wants to be the Polynesian Lavelle. And BYU's going to the Big 12. He's got his thing rolling right now. He's got his staff. He's had his team ranked in the past two seasons. And, I mean, as much as this makes people nervous, this is a compliment to Kalani to be in this conversation. Yeah. It, Major if, compliment. If your coach isn't considered, your coach might, for yeah. other jobs, might, your coach might not yeah. be good enough, right? Never say never is one thought. And then the other is the Big 12 is the game changer. BYU's budget is going to go up. Perhaps they can pay Kalani more, be more competitive in that way, pay the assistants more. He just re-upped his contract, yeah. by the way. Yeah. Well, extended. We don't know that he got paid more, per se. But I would hope that once BYU, some of that TV money starts coming in, uh, that, hey, you can pay the coaches a little more. I don't feel like the timing or is now more. for Kalani to jump ship from BYU. Like this week? Yeah. Hey, do you want to take the USC <laughs> job? You're 2-0. and Yeah. USC job is pretty good, man. Joe Wheat, super BYU fan, sent out a rivalry shot via Twitter last night. He said, and I quote, it is proposed that we rename Tyler Algiers running lanes to talent gaps. (laughs) All in favor, please manifest. It appears the uh, voting has been unanimous, by the way. Bill Belichick praised Zach Wilson in his press conference yesterday, saying Zach's an explosive player. He's got a great arm. Live arm makes all the throws. Athletic. Is this peak Zach Wilson so far in the NFL? Uh, just add that compliment to the rest. Like, I I, I know that Bill Belichick is the way a little more with Bill. Bill Belichick is the goat, but it's it's game week. You know, like Belichick is playing this right. He's going to compliment his opponents because he's getting his team's mindset right. You know, so I. I wouldn't expect anything less. I don't know if it's peak Zach Wilson. That throw he made against Carolina when he got drilled in the chest across his body and it set up a touchdown pass late in the game, that to me is the peak moment for Zach Wilson. That's even better than what Bill Belichick is saying because Zach was doing something. Yeah. No, this is peak to me. Really? He was playing the Panthers. (laughs) All right. (laughs) BYU women's soccer has scored seven goals in each of its last two home matches, Jerem. Do you expect seven goals again tonight against Idaho State? I kind of do, honestly. Like, I'm, I'm, no offense to Idaho State. Just, listen, if BYU can do it against Missouri. And Marquette. And Mar- Marquette. Yeah. Uh, certainly capable against Idaho State, right? But se- to expect seven is kind of crazy. It just depends on how long Jen Rockwood leaves in all of the starters. Well, the subs scored, like, two or three. Saturday. Against Missouri. And gave up three. Yeah. <laughs> Late. There's that, too. <laughs> Yeah, I'm with you. I, I kind of feel strongly that BYU is going to hit the seven mark against Idaho State and then maybe call it off. Okay, coming up, an emergency appendectomy and passing the bar in the same week. We'll tell you which former Cougar did that. Plus, the head volleyball coach at BYU, Heather Olmstead, previews tonight's rivalry matchup between two top 15 teams. This is BYU Sports Nation. That's a live shot. That's not a picture. Hello, Heather. Introducing the all-new 2021 Nissan Rogue. A fuel-efficient car that's compact enough to park just about anywhere, but has enough cargo space to fit your hobbies, your kids' hobbies, and your dog's hobbies. It's equipped with the latest safety and efficiency technology for a smooth and quiet ride wherever you want to go, whether it's through the neighborhood or across the country. Are you ready to rogue? It's at Tim Daly Nissan Southtown. One thing Mountain America has learned over nearly a century of helping members achieve their financial dreams is that we are stronger together. We achieve great things together. And while we are still here to serve you, we know together feels different right now. It might take some time, but we're looking forward to the day when we can gather together again. We're still here, guiding you forward. Tour luxurious blanket. Getting cozy with family and friends. A gift for everyone. Minky Couture, official luxury blanket of BYU Athletics. This is Count 
down to kickoff. You guys, I think done. players are tough. <laughs> Broadcasters are way tougher than players. Algier into the end zone with a punctuation. That is how you start countdown to kickoff. Touchdown! Isaac Rex laying out for the score. I'm, I'm gonna mark that one down. That's big enough. Early spicy, it. mark it down. Mark you know? it down. Yeah. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Tonight's match might be as interesting, compelling, and great as a regular season match can be. Number 10 Utah versus number 15 BYU. Both teams have a player who transferred to the other team. Big rivalry, of course, 9 Eastern on BYU TV in the end. There will be 4,000 plus in the Smithfield House. It's going to be ridiculous tonight. Cannot wait. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. We are live in Studio B to preview tonight's ridiculous matchup, as uh, Jerem just put it, is the head coach of BYU women's volleyball, Heather Olmstead. Coach, it's rivalry day. We know you're busy. We appreciate you hanging out with us. How are you feeling today? I'm feeling good. Thanks for having me. Excited for uh, the match tonight. We appreciate you guys hyping it up because it, it needs more hype for sure. Hey, you bet. Yes, and I, I can't even tell if you're sarcastic or not. I think you are. Uh, we cannot wait for this because, obviously, it's Utah. If both teams were unranked, it'd still be awesome. But the way that Utah has been playing upsets Nebraska on Saturday, then surprisingly loses to Boise State. Um, but then your team, you went back east. You played a really tough game with number four Pitt. So a couple losses there to sort of have an edge to this one that's kind of interesting. Yeah, it is interesting. I think uh, both teams are playing well. I think Utah is a great team. They're well coached. They, they do what they do really well. So they're going to come into the, the, the Smithfield house and be ready to go. And so are we. I like the fact that we both, you know, learned a little bit about our teams last week. And I think that's going to serve our team well going back east and playing a competitive tournament. I like how we responded after that pit match uh, by playing high point really well. So we're, we're excited to we were excited to get back in the gym this week and, and work on the things that we learned um, from that loss against Pitt. Let's dive into that a little bit. What specifically did you learn in that loss to number four Pitt? Yeah, we, we talked about it a bunch as a staff and as a team. We learned that there really are no little things. Every, everything we do, every touch is, is a big deal on the court. It's, it's a point. And so we came into the gym a little bit more focused to get some better first ball touches, uh, better better execution on our side. Our serve and pass game wasn't exactly where we want it to be. And so we've got to focus, focus more in those areas and, and see if we can tidy up some things heading into, you know, obviously a top 15 matchup this week where, you know, we get to be the underdogs, which, which we like. And so that's exciting for us. You know, we're home and I think it, it, it presents a great opportunity for us to get back to playing BYU volleyball. A couple of years ago, Utah upsets BYU in the NCAA tournament here. There's a switch of a couple of players from that game. Kenzie Kerber comes down to BYU. Madeline Robinson goes up. What dynamic does that storyline play in tonight's matchup? Yeah, I, I, I think it's exciting that we get to play a top 15 team, top 10 team in the Smith Fieldhouse. So whether there's those storylines or not, it's, it's our next match, and it happens to be against a good team, and it happens to be our, our rivalry game, which is exciting for everybody. So there's storylines aplenty here. You guys will be talking about them. You guys will be hyping <laughs> them up. And we just get to go out and play the game. We're going to focus on our side of the net. We know there's a lot going on emotionally. There's a lot of talk, but we just want to play good volleyball. We want to get back to BYU volleyball, executing at a high level, and, and performing, you know, obviously on a big stage. And this is this is what our girls, you know, play for. That's why they practice is for these matches. So grateful it's at home. Uh, we had a year off last year with, with COVID. And so it ends up that 2021 gets to be here. The Rock has been fantastic this whole year. They've showed up. And so we expect them to show up tonight and help us with the energy. Heather, I know you're going to have a long and continually fruitful coaching career, but have you ever considered at any point becoming a volleyball analyst and hype person? Because we got, oh, we got room. <laughs> I'd love to. I've talked. I've offered to go talk for the men's volleyball, but you guys never take me up on it. So hey, I'd love to. Need, I love need, watching. Let's, let's do it. Steve has to be Still sick one day. Nerd. Dude has a, a brain tumor and didn't miss a match. It was like, who is this guy? Yeah, it was insane, right? Okay, uh, on the Utah side, Danny Drew is one of the most dynamic players in the country. What has your attention specifically from what she does? Yeah, she's a great player. Um, she's physical. She's getting a ton of attempts, a ton of kills per set. So we're going to be 
obviously keying on her. They've got great um, people to, to uh, attack at all the pins, three, three great pins they like to set. And they're good. They're well coached. They're good. She's, she, she loves, she thrives under this circumstance. So uh, we're going to just focus on playing our, our complete volleyball where we don't have to do anything special. We're going to put pressure as best we can with our serve, um, see if we can get some good block touches, turn some balls. But uh, the energy, you know, the, the excitement for this game is going to be off the charts. So we're just trying to bottle that energy up to perform the best we can tonight, knowing they have great players. So do we. We've got great players. We've got all Americans. We've got people that are out to just we're still look, we're still trying to find out who we are as a team. We're still in this norming stage where we're, we're finding out roles. We're figuring out who goes where. And so we're not you know, this this well figured out team. We've got three transfers playing. We've got a kid that just came off a mission. So we're we're taking our time figuring out about this team. And this match is going to help us learn even more about our team. Yeah, amen. And I want to ask about Heather Knighting, kind of her development. Uh, you know, what is she probably nine or 10 weeks off of a mission uh, four weeks yeah. into the season? How is she doing yeah. physically and mentally in returning? Yeah. Because 2018, she was the national freshman of the year. Yeah, well, she's number two in hitting percentage in the country be behind uh, so somebody else in the, in the middle. And so, I mean, who would have thought, you know, she'd come back and she'd be uh, prepared to step on the court. And I'm so proud of her and what she, the work she put in while she was, you know, on her mission and her mentality and telling me, I'm going to come back and play. Uh, and I said, yeah, Heather, we'll, we'll talk about it. We'll see. Like, go do your thing. We'll talk. And uh, sure enough, you know, she put her money where her mouth, mouth is and, it's, it, it's pretty impressive. I'm really happy for her. We're still bringing her along. She's still figuring out workouts and, and getting into the swing of things in school, but couldn't be more proud of her for her uh, ability to focus and grind every day. And, um, you know, she's been a bright spot for sure. BYU head women's volleyball coach Heather Olmstead with us on BYU Sports Nation. I know that uh, all of the focus is understandably on Utah tonight, but – you know, humor me, if you will, and let me rewind to last Friday when the Big 12 officially invites BYU. How has that announcement changed the feel around your your buildings, your meetings, your players, and just the overall athletic department? Yeah, what a great moment for BYU, the university athletic department. Congrats to President Worthen, Tom Holm, O'Brien, for the work they put in to get us into that position to be looked at, to be considered, and to be accepted into you know, a wonderful conference that is the Big 12. Our team was hyped. Um, we told them right before the announcement last Friday, we had two games that day. So unfortunately, we were like, hey, guess what, girls? We're going to the Big 12 in 2023, but we got to play three matches in 24 hours. So let's go. <laughs> and we'll talk about it later. So we haven't really addressed it as much as we want to because they know that it's in the future, 2023. Some of them won't even be here. We've got recruits that are coming that we've, we've been keying on, letting them know. But the vibe is great. Um, I'm so proud of just what BYU's done and the work they put in to get us in that position. I'm grateful to play in the West Coast Conference for the next two years for the coaches that we coach alongside with, against, and that we get to do that for two more years. They've been incredible, and we, we're, we love the West Coast Conference and the opportunity that provides us looking forward to the next two years, but also looking what this does for us in the future in 2023 and beyond. Every team has its own recruiting dynamics. In the case of women's soccer for Jennifer for Rockwood, she gets mostly LDS kids and a lot from Utah, some California and Idaho. With women's volleyball in the Big 12, will this open doors that maybe weren't as open before, or, or will it be pretty status quo? Yeah, to be determined on that, I, I mean, our goals don't change. We want to win a conference championship and a national championship. So nothing changes on the goal front. That's, that's our goals here at the West Coast Conference, and it has been. So, and we've been able to accomplish, you know, winning the conference a bunch, and we've yet to win that national championship. So, to be determined, you know, what that does, what doors it opens, but I know that we're going to we're gonna grind to find kids that want to be at BYU, that want to represent the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and that want to win BYU's first national championship. All right, Heather. Uh, selfishly, I hope that Texas stays in the conference until 2025, because I love the idea of BYU women's volleyball, really BYU in any sport taking on Texas based on success that the Cougars have had against the Longhorns. But what will the conference be like? Because, I mean, to be perfectly honest, Texas has dominated the conference for so long. If they leave, what do you think the Big 12 will be like? Yeah, I think it'll be a very competitive conference. Baylor's uh, was in the Final Four a couple of years ago. 
Um, you've got wonderful programs all throughout the state of Texas. You've got, you know, just Iowa State, Kansas was in a Final Four. I mean, it's it's great volleyball. Then you get to go on the East Coast a little bit, um, Florida and Morgantown. So I think it's going to be very competitive. I think it's going to be high level of volleyball, and hopefully we get to add to that already excellent conference that it is. So your brother Sean is right above you um, in ter- in the space you're in. Is he ever too loud? And do you have a broom to where you hit <laughs> up a well, ball? Well, actually, I was meeting with one of my players last week. And we heard like a loud thud and we both looked up like terrified that Sean had like fainted because he maybe didn't eat enough on a run or something or somebody hit him. So we were, we were, I didn't go check on him. That's the weird thing. So I wasn't that worried, (laughs) but I heard a loud thud. (laughs) So it's fun. I can't ever hear his conversations and hopefully he can't hear mine, but it's pretty fun. And that's the first time you've heard a thud. This isn't a thing. Uh, that's pretty, that was a pretty loud thought. That was the first time. Okay. 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 Hey, we just got to keep the brother and sister relationship going strong. (laughs) Things are good for BYU volleyball overall. Heather, let's give you as much BYU sports nation karma as we can potentially gather here in studio B. We're sending it to you through zoom. Let's go. Give it to me. Yes. To you specifically. Good challenges and timeouts. Yes. Well, you, you have a great track record in that regard. Heather, good luck tonight. Uh, can't wait to watch. Thanks so much. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me on. You got it. Heather Olmstead, future hype star and future. volleyball analyst. Yeah. Listen, she loves nothing more than winning. Okay? That's what. That's well, the she thing. does a lot of that's it. That's the thing that Heather Olmstead does is she is a winner, man. She wins like yeah. 90% of her matches. She's incredible. It's going to be amazing tonight. We got the doubleheader we talked about. Women's soccer with Idaho State on the app. Women's volleyball. Uh, versus Utah, top 15 matchup on the app in BYU TV. It's going to be a fun night, it's man. It's a multi-screen type of night, people. Yeah. But I, I've always wondered at some point we should do this because it would be super fun of switching at, at like, like at some point. Like the old yes, through. Yes. At some point, I hey, think we should do that. You want to come call the second half of uh, soccer? And, no, but, uh, like, we predetermine it so that I know what the heck I'm doing with okay. the other one. Yeah, exactly. We could we could do that. Not tonight, though. Coming, yeah, no. <laughs> but it's not a top 15. Exactly. You're like, I ain't giving anything up in that game. Well, I would want the back half of women's volleyball. Yes. Coming up, your response is about if it's too early to talk about it being a special football season. And a rise and shout out to something that uh, has kept us entertained over the last week. This is BYU Sports Nation. If I got hurt and was laid up at home, I wouldn't even think to call a lawyer. What a hassle. I'd want to meet them first. What if I told you that for your first consultation, your lawyer will come to you, home or hospital? Really? Really. They do that? If you've been injured, we'll come to you. It's your job to get better. It's our job to deal with the insurance companies. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. Familiar with the BYU TV app? Yes. I beg your pardon? Sure, it's got great original TV shows. But it also gives you access to family films for free. Wow. Awesome! So gather around, grab some popcorn, and let us do the rest. It'll be fun. Watch some of your favorite films anytime, anywhere. (laughs) With the free BYU TV app. I like it. This week is all about the pure physical power. My legs are just completely numb and they feel so weak I can barely stand. Oh, that is really <laughs> heavy. Oh. This sport is absolutely exhausting. These athletes are blowing my expectations. They've all jumped into powerlifting with 100% enthusiasm. I'm just going to give it everything I have. I want to leave it all out there. Deep breaths. Here we go. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU Sports Nation, always available on demand via the BYU TV and BYU radio apps. Or you can download the podcast by Googling it, and then you can subscribe, rate, and review it if you so choose.
If you Google it like Blaine Fowler, it's... That's how he does that, Every time he says Google he it, he, he does this with his fingers. Yeah, I'm not sure what's happening there. Why? He, all the blood's flowing down. That's kind of weird. It, sh- it should be more like <laughs> this, I, not up. Like, what I is, don't know. That's like when people are like, yeah, I was riding a bike. Like, with your hands? Like, I was riding, riding my bike. You have a hand right. bike? What? Our, with those fantastic thoughts now in your mind, <laughs> our question of the day, is it too early to get that special season feel yes. about this year's BYU football team? Too early. At Mike Main Event answers on Twitter. It's already been a special season. Of course, it could be more special. BYU has a lot of dangerous teams on the schedule, but getting the Utah Monkey off the back along with Big 12 membership, tough to beat. Yes, but that can change quickly. It makes a great point. Like, the the Big 12 thing already kind of makes this whole year special. Beating Utah the year BYU got into the Big 12, 100%. 100%. If BYU goes 8-5, and we'll still be like, beat Utah, got into the Big 12. Yes, Mm, totally agree. Yep. At Kip Kent, asking a BYU fan if it's too early to get that special season feeling is like asking a Utah fan if it's too early to start downplaying anything positive about BYU. <laughs> it's never too early. Well played, Mauer. At That's, BYU Ace Man, you got this one. It's never too early. We'll see him tonight. It's never too early. That's why they make blue goggles, yep. so we can enjoy that euphoric feeling all year long. Now, I'm not putting on the – well, if it's blue a special season – Blue yeah. If it's a special this, season, this you need like, these super this is oversized like a blue ten goggles. plus win season yeah. with seven power fives. Now imagine BYU doing that. Man, that'd be crazy. They're on their way. Let's go. All right, our elite voice of the day presented by Sundance Mountain Resort. From at Roberts underscore MN. Any time before general conference is way too early. This is the home of the uh, way too early excitement. Hey, just be excited. It's all good. Okay, so at Roberts underscore MN is uh, feeling like it's okay. Yeah. If BYU is 5-0 after they beat Utah State that Friday night. I think it would be more than okay, yes. Okay. Today's Rise and Shoutouts presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. I want to give one to my colleague who I call soccer with, and you call soccer Our matches with. Colleague. Yes. Yeah. Carla Swenson Haslam had an emergency appendectomy, had to have her appendix removed earlier this week. Just kind of a horrible scenario. She was a champ, is recovering well. Yeah. But she found out last night she passed the bar. Yeah. And she is officially a lawyer in the state of Utah. So B- BYU Law. Congra- congratulations, Carla. That nice. is amazing. Gnarly week. Gnarly week for her. So she's not going to be calling the matches this week, obviously. Uh, rest up. We need you soon. Yeah, we need the lawyer in the house, right? She knows what's up. Congratulations to Carla. We're not done yet. There's uh, some new swag from BYU equipment too, Jerem. Uh, BYU and the Big 12. Those logos always together. Billy Nixon, the doctor. Billy Nixon, this you're this my morning. hero. How do I get this shirt? Hi, Let's Billy. Go. Can we have one? Our thanks to today's guests, Rod Gilmore and Heather Olmstead. Sorry to Dennis Pitt. Apparently I had time for him while I was gone. Yep. That's good because I was gone. I am happy that I wasn't there. For Jerem. I am Spencer. Shout out to Jen Hampson. We'll see you tonight at 9 Eastern for BYU Women's Volleyball and BYU Women's Soccer on BYU TV and the app. Go Cougs. Let's go!